Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at Click or Key, the hidden rhythms of clip navigation. All right, I put together a few important tips about working with clips, clip navigation, the effects control panel update, and uh, just some things that, that kind of come up. And at the end, I'll show you uh, a great tip that a lot of advanced editors use. So what I'm talking about is navigating on the timeline clips themselves. And if we have a look here, you can see I've got um, a few clips on different tracks, audio and video, and uh, transitions, and lots of things going on. And the first thing I want to show you is something very simple, and that's clip navigation using the up and down arrow. But you also have to take into account track targeting. What the heck is track targeting? That's the V1, A1 stuff over here that if you're a new user, you probably don't pay attention to. If I have V1 selected and I hit the down arrow, you can see my playhead moving through the clips only in V1. If I turn V1 track targeting off, it's still going to use that one. And your first question might be, why? And this is something that comes up for years. People would, once they understand what track targeting is, they tend to think that if track targeting is turned off, then nothing will move. No, what the engineers did, they made a decision years ago to always default to V1 or A1. If you don't have anything selected, it's just going to jump from A1. Um, but if you have V2 selected, and now I hit the up and down arrows, I'm only jumping to the position that's the beginning, and that's each one of those titles that are coming up. Same with uh, down at the bottom. If I go to A3, which is uh, sound effects, I jump to those sound effects. That's really useful if you've got a very dense timeline, and maybe you're working on timing, either of the clips themselves or the sound effects with the picture, and you just want to jump to where those clips are. And maybe those clips are so far down in the timeline you can't see them. So that's good. But Adobe has created an amazing keyboard shortcut. By adding the Shift key, you change the kind of uh, uh, movement that you have. So what we have here is up and down arrow jumping on V1. If you add the Shift key, watch, it jumps to the title, the end of the title, the next clip, the next clip, the next. It now, when you add Shift to this, it becomes go to next edit point on any track. An edit point is the end of a clip, either two clips connected or just something sitting on a track all, all on its own. I use this all the time. I primarily just jump on, on one track of the one I'm editing, the video track, but occasionally I just want to quickly jump around. Okay, the next thing I want to explore is something that, that people see and they wonder what the heck this is. Let, let's zoom in as far as we can. So I'll move to a point here, and I'm just hitting the plus key on the top of my keyboard. By the way, if you hold the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and use the trackpad scroll or scroll wheel, you can also zoom in. And if you see this, the playhead now has a little tail on it facing to the right. And this confuses a lot of users. In fact, I've seen countless posts where people say, how do I get rid of that? You can't get rid of it. It's Adobe's way of indicating to you, not just the beginning of the clip, of, of the frame rather, the beginning of the frame, but the end of the frame. Because we're zoomed so far in that those two marks are a frame. Again, depending on the, the uh, uh, the frames that we have set in our uh, uh, sequence settings. But that is always there to tell you what we're looking at here is that frame. The next frame is that frame. And if we go to a, a clip, we can see that is the end of this clip, and the next one is the beginning of the next clip. It's confusing for some people. Basically, now you, that you know what it is, don't pay attention to it. 
but we can go even finer. If you wanted to work on the audio, and this makes no sense with video, you cannot snap or trim anything smaller than a frame size, a frame accurate, that's it. But if you go to the little flyout menu here and turn on show audio time units, I want you to watch the SMPTE time code over here on the left. Watch this change. Boom. And you'll notice that we don't have that little tail anymore. And if we hit plus, 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 we can zoom in to unbelievable lengths in the audio. And now when we're moving this, we, we can see the tail only when we're zoomed in where we can't zoom anymore. So each one of these is the audio unit size. This is fantastic for trimming little pieces out um, or getting rid of clicks or pops. You can zoom all the way. You can't chop the video based on the audio units though. So I'm gonna turn this back off and you notice that we zoom out quite a bit. So let me reset everything uh, here. So, and I'm just holding the shift key uh, in the header area. Okay, so that's navigating in the timeline and what things look like. The next thing I'm gonna show you is an update that could easily have gone uh, unnoticed by a lot of people, and that's in the effects control panel. So if I click on this clip, let's say I want, this clip looks okay, but it's a little bit static. I just wanna do a little push into this clip. So I'll go to the effects controls. By the way, I'm in, I'm in the essentials um, workspace. I, I tweak a few things and, and call mine home base. But if we look at this clip, and open up motion, and I'm going to change pos position and scale. So let's say that I wanted to start here. Now I've got this at 110%, but if I go to 100, I got black bars, and I didn't want that. So I'm gonna go to 110 and add a keyframe for scale and for position. And at the end, I want this to uh, increase by a certain amount. I don't know what that amount is. I want to see it visually while I'm changing it. Here's the big change that Adobe added. If I drag my playhead to the end, I can still see the clip. Watch this. Drag to the end, see the clip. Yay! Now, if, if, if that just seems normal to you, great. But if you're like me, it wasn't like this for, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years. When you dragged it only, only in the effects control panel, when you drag to the end, you would either see black or it would just be the next clip and you couldn't, you couldn't edit it. So my tip for people was always move ahead, change the number, drag the keyframe. That's two operations. It's a waste of time, twice as much work. But worse is I can't see what the effect is having on the frame. I want this change to be at the end, not in the middle somewhere. So finally, this works, okay? And by the way, this is not the tip I wanted to show you. So let me drag this out. These tend to get a little um, busy in here if they're not correct. Okay, so now I'm on the end and I'll change this. I'm just gonna drag this again because I don't know what I want and I'll drag the position over here. I'll select both of these, right click and ease in. Oop, and I'm only easing in on that, that one, ease out. So now when I drag to the, to the beginning, I can see that effect on the clip. And I think that's a little bit too much. So let me take that down a little bit. Okay. And I don't have to, before you would ha actually have to move this ahead and then go back one frame here to be able to see it. So that's an update in the effects control panel that happened a few months ago, maybe kind of sorta, I missed it. Uh, I missed talking about it. I flipped out when, when I read that in the list of updates. But here's the tip that a lot of editors love to do. And this is an, an old technique. When you constrain those keyframes to only the beginning and the end of the visible clip on the timeline, they think 
it's not as smooth as it could be. So a typical technique that editors will do is they'll actually put the keyframes outside of the area. But how do you do that? If I can only go to the end and the beginning of this in this area, how do I add a keyframe? Look for the effects control panel, the little flyout, and turn this off, pin to clip. And you'll immediately see that I can now zoom out. So I, that's the end of the clip, this, this shaded area. But what I can do is I can drag this to the end. And some editors just feel that this is just more natural to them. It's, it's a smoother um, movement. Personally, with ease in on the end, I don't think this is a problem. But hey, I don't want to restrict editors from something that they're used to that they like. So that is, is two critical tips in the effects control panel that I think make a huge difference. That dragging to the end for me is great. It always annoyed me. So there you go. Hopefully if uh, you found this useful and you appreciate it, maybe subscribe if you want. Uh, till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to put together a, a few interesting tips that I think are useful to absolute new beginners to complete um, veteran editors out there.